Okay, so okay, so um, I think um, yeah, it's important. You know, as you mentioned, um, within the abnet setting for um, children to have some degree of um, uh, understanding uh, as to what their particular charisms, their particular skills, or the, the natural direction um, that they uh, to follow in life in terms of um, education and also piety um, I think that's really important you know and I, I think yeah it just naturally comes out when you're provided uh, with the right environment so for myself you know raising my own girls you know uh, I think it's important to simply you know provide the environment um, and not to kind of compel um, anyone to do anything you know of course god doesn't compel us doesn't force us to believe right so you know um taking the the the, the example of our lord and you know um really i would uh, i would say that yeah it's, it's important to at least open the door um and to let them experience uh, as much as possible and to educate them that to educate them uh, as to what what is available and you know how they could pursue and really you know just listen to uh children and you know pursue the, the conversations to find out you know what it is the kind of questions that they're asking and really try to to dig deeper and um you know help them understand help them make their, their own decisions um so yeah that, that would be my my take on um you know, raising uh, youth as a parent uh, within the church. Uh, so, yeah, I'm very much, um, very much, uh, yeah, with I you think on that's that. that's beautiful. Point. Yeah, that's a beautiful balance to to prepare the environment, like you said, and and you know, it's our job to sow, <laughs> and how how the seed grows, we we leave that up up to God, but we do our our duty, and part of the the duty you felt in in this draw is to go and and learn yourself so how how did you know where to go you know did someone instruct you how to learn or how to pursue studies in the church yeah no, that's a good question um when i was first baptized uh, so we missed the, the whole kind of uh, lead up to orthodoxy but when <laughs> after i was baptized um you know i i just wanted to, to learn more, you know, to find out what's out there. I could obviously see that there's not a great deal um, in the English language in the um, the books, bookshops, the bookstores in um, Addis Ababa. So, um, yeah, I, I just kind of uh, branched out and tried to speak to as many uh, well-informed um, uh, people, clergymen and um, uh, scholars uh, as possible. And, um, you know, yeah, one of the... Um, uh first things that i heard was about the holy trinity theological college um so i just i just turned up there i just went that went down and you know see yeah to find somebody to speak to and um you know the uh Zabinya, he, he just pointed me to the uh <laughs> the office of uh former abba Haile mariam melissa uh so currently um abuna aragawi his eminence abuna aragawi um and um you know he was more than happy to, you know, welcome me into his office, and um, you know, I expressed, you know, I'm, I'm learning some Amharic as well as, you know, the, the doctrines of the church. And, oh yes, you know, come and sit down, and you know, we'll go through. I had the um, the book. I forget the title now. It's the the one with um, uh, order of worship, ecumenical relations. It's Amharic and English front oh, and back. Uh, is it Fatan Agast? No, not for Tanagust. It's um, produced by the church. It was in the time of, um, I think, started under Abuna Merk Orios and finished under Abuna Paulos. Um, so, you know, yeah, it, you know, included uh, lots of the um, uh, scholars like uh, Magabi Buluya, Sefer Selassie, uh, and, uh, you know, um, yeah, quite quite a lot of the scholars from the Gavant uh, Kubai and so forth uh, and it was translated into english it was actually the world council of churches that requested uh, that document uh, produced 
so we went through that you know it starts with the existence of god and you know the the five pillars of mystery and you know seven sacraments and all of this and you know he took me through it i actually had um kind of a catechism whilst in shashamani just because i was interested in reading the bible in amharic beforehand um but yeah as i say it was after um i was uh, baptized that i just started to go out you know into the world and start to ask the questions you know just uh you know with yeah um my my interest and you know uh led by the holy spirit i would say you know so um uh that was uh that was one way um but also it's more specifically um you know uh there's a priest here who's been uh in in uk for uh more than 40 years now uh lika branat mm -hmm. uh um you know he came over here during the imperial uh, regime um and remained here and um he advised me personally yeah he said you know go for the degree at holy trinity theological college and um that's that's basically i didn't look back from there i just uh, you know uh, put all my my uh, energy into that and you know uh, thanks be to god you know he brought it to yeah, fruition brought it to completion I graduated in um 2014 so yeah, from 2010 to 2014, um, I was there at the uh, theological college, and um, that's that's really how um, I managed to, to to go there was just you know speaking to as many of the fathers and scholars as possible. That's wonderful, and and they conduct their courses there in English or in Amharic. Yeah, the medium of um, uh, education uh, communication is. Um, mostly in uh english actually uh, officially mm -hmm. however <laughs> <laughs> yeah, officially <laughs> you know you might have the, the handouts in english sometimes and you know nearly all the the conversation is you know we, we read a page from the handouts and then discuss it all in amaharic so the yeah, um, you know uh it might say that the you know the church history is in english right but we, we, we read we read, read the material and then we discuss it in Amharic. So, you know, I had to kind of, um, uh, you know, get with it uh, fairly quickly there with regards to the, the language. And also because it's obviously designed for um, Ethiopians, um, you know, most of the Amharic subjects are put at the front, you know, so like Hadiskidan, um, Bulikidan, mm -hmm. Ene, <laughs> all of these things are right at the beginning. You know, so so in a sense, it, it kind of I was dropped in the deep end, yeah. Um, and uh, my grades uh, improved a bit more. You know, the further um, down the line I got um, with regard to the you know the uh, subjects that were actually in English. Um, so um, yeah, uh, mostly English. I think they say it's around three quarters or two thirds is supposed to be in English, and the rest in Amharic. That's right, uh, and. I've, I've heard other people who've learned the language, and it's hard for me to say because Amharic was my first language in the home, so it's, it's hard for me to even, you know, judge the level of difficulty, for example, but a lot of our texts are in, in Giz as well, and we've mentioned this, it's the language of the church, whereas Amharic is the vernacular. Did, it, did learning Giz seem easier or not than Amharic or vice versa? Even when you mentioned reading the Bible, this desire to read the Bible in Amharic, I smiled because, you know, um, I think when my parents were like born uh, around that time is when the Bible was first printed in Amharic. And even in those first few years, people in our church, you know, uh, wrongly a lot of time would be very skeptical of that translation it, it came top down it was it was the emperor's decision to translate into amharic the church kind of on its own although he was a figure of the church in a sense um hadn't come to that conclusion yet there were the the tereguami Beit had the interpretations in amharic but oftentimes the the biblical text was preserved in in Giz. and and some people tell me that the grammar of Giz is kind of closer to English for them than Amharic. Um, and just in terms of like the order of verbs and nouns and, and, and such was, did you find one easier or harder or were you just, you know, able to just 
get through both of them. You you talk about how they threw you in the deep end. Well, thank God you you didn't sink. You know you've you've been thriving, <laughs> and we're going to get into some of your publications as well, which is what I would like to promote here and have people. Um, make sure they purchase them and 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 read and and really live a, a life of prayer because you've dedicated yourself to filling in this gap that you saw. You know, it's not like you had some preconceived notion of what your ministry was going to look like, but you adapted. You say, "Hey, there aren't these things. We need these things." That's right. Yeah. You know, the, uh, your question about the the, the Bible is uh, really interesting. I mean, because we still haven't got um, one complete Bible in goods. Right, that you know, uh, we have 81 books, uh, Samanya Wahadu uh, books. And last time I spoke to the Ligaon de Kuwai, uh, the patriarchate, they told me that that was a project, you know, to, mm -hmm. to complete the Bible. So, okay, we, we still I have, have uh, the yeah. New Testament, they have printed the New Testament officially from the Synod. Whereas before, I think it was some Catholic is right press in Asmara that, that they had a printing press because of the Italians over there. And I had seen that they have the Samantu Behera Orit, um, which is the first eight books of the Bible plus Jubilees. Uh, right. That's what I've seen in print. <laughs> I haven't seen anything else in print. And then you have to just buy everything else individually. Like uh, I think if you if you buy the the Andamta books, y you can find the text. But like you said, there's no one bound eighty one book one. And people ask me all the time right. for an English version, and I try to explain to them that there's no Guz version, let alone an English version, <laughs> like commercially available. Right. Yeah. And even uh, you mentioned the the New Testament in Guz, um, which you know, thank God that's available, um, and you can find the PDF online, the Platt um, edition. Um, but um, still, we haven't got the the eight books of uh, church order, the uh, Clementine Octatuke. You mentioned the uh, the Octatuke of the Old Testament, the uh, you know um, uh, of uh, of the prophet Moses, uh, the Octatuke of uh, Moses. But um, the yeah, Clementine Octatuke is also very important, and you know that's uh, that's certainly not included in the the published uh, uh, edition of the uh, uh, New Testament. So um, you know, yeah, I think we still have a way to go there. But no, to get back to your question, which was uh, which uh, language uh, I found easier. I found Amharic a lot easier when I actually went through the Giz um, courses at uh, Seminary Theological College. So um, I realized, okay, this is a structure and this is how you learn it. Okay, it makes sense because I just don't jump straight in with a dictionary and just speaking to people and, you know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> then uh, kind of worked it out and you know what does c mean okay uh, yeah, it's about time and lee okay it's conditional and you know eventually you just kind of get the um the grasp of it that way but you know kind of looking at it um uh from the perspective of uh, the traditional education system you know the way that um is uh is taught well it's any bit we had uh Kenny on one side and is uh on the other side so it was um you know uh, is the Amharic translation in the the last uh, semester, and before that, mostly um, uh, it was uh, grammar and so on. So um, you know, um, yeah, Amharic was a lot easier after uh, I had studied Giz, uh because you know it, it gave me that kind of you know, um, straightforward uh, system of learning. Which uh, which I hadn't had uh, the first time round, so I was very much I very much appreciated that. And then I tried to to replicate it with uh, Tigrinya, although you know uh, I think I might have um, sunk sunk when I was thrown in the deep end there. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Gizia Allo, Gizia Allo Zahwe. I'm I'm on that Tigrinya learning journey as as well, so uh, right. we we can we can struggle through that one together. <laughs> it's Amiya. <laughs> I mean, I mean. Um, so you graduated and not that long ago relative to how how productive you've been in 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 producing works i know i'm supposed to be getting it later this week because of the pandemic it's been a it's been a while but a, a friend of mine uh purchased for me the the prayer book that you have of of the daily prayers can you tell us about that publication just in terms of what's in it? And, um, you know, for the sake of the audience, I, I think some of the people may not know. So please um, let, let us know a lot about that publication. Right. Yeah. So it's called uh, Daily Prayers of the Ethiopian Orthodox Twilight Church. 
um, that's my title. Um, the texts that are included in it are what are known as um, Kaltemert. Kaltemert, which is the, uh, you know, they're the prayers that you learn um, by rote. You know, you repeat these prayers over and over and um, you memorize them. Uh, so Kal meaning sort of memorization in that sense, you know, of course, Kal means word, but yeah, in, in, the, in that sense, you know, it's um, a kind of um, education by memorization. So um, yeah, the, the prayers are the daily prayers. So you need to know these prayers for, you know, most of the services, Buddhasi um, Mariam, you know, Melka Maria, Melka Jesus, you know, these prayers are, are prayed all the time. So you need to, to remember them all. Um, However, um, I produced it in English. And the reason why I produced it in English is because our Kesegebes, uh, Kesegebes, Haile uh, Maskel Samuels, um, really persisted in um, um, pushing me to, to do it. He, he first um, approached me when I was in my dissertation year, uh, 2019. Um, and um, I said, no, I'm, I'm doing my dissertation, Father, you know, no chance I'm going to be, you know, <laughs> <laughs> producing a prayer book. And then I got a call back the next the next week, uh, no, we need the prayer book. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he just pushed me and pushed me. And OK, I said, OK, yeah, this is this obviously is clearly something I need to do. So um, so I, I just did it. I mean, I had a, an old translation from, I'd say, maybe around 2013, 2014 um so i just um reproduced it and um you know made it accessible for our members especially here at Zerhation. um the the prayer book that we had you know was um just uh with um you know just the the opening prayers um and uh, um yeah um that that was all we had really um so I wanted to bring it into the 21st century, you know, the, the text that we had, because, uh, you know, Wallace Budge's translation of uh, Wadassi Mariam is uh, Elizabethan English, was in the Elizabethan <laughs> English, the D and Dao, and, you know, yeah, um, all of that. So, um, and these were conversations that um, I'd had with the clergy before I left for seminary, um, you know, that uh, we need to update the language gradually and, you know, uh, move forward in that that way so um yep i uh, i just did a fresh translation of the uh, all the texts of uh, what we call Galtemert. um and uh, so there are six parts is uh, what called common prayer sweater um wadasi mariam the veneration of our lady mary and um, some prefer praises praises more um universal i suppose in the in the Catalogues and so on, you'll find praises of Mary. Yeah, um, but I prefer veneration. Praise can all, generally, um, I've seen dictionaries that uh, say praise can be um, for the saints. Generally, um, you know, you find praise for um, in, the, in the sense of worship, praise in the sense of worship. So veneration uh, of Mary, um, or Dasi Mariam, Anka to the gate of light, you were this uh, the angels venerated her. Um, Melka Mariam, Melka Jesus. So the milk of Mary, the milk of Jesus. So um, the the milk uh, genre is, um, you know, I'm sure you've mentioned it on your program before. I think somebody um, I mentioned it to me that you, you've been discussing, you know, the, the, the meaning of milk as image um and also it's a hard word a, to translate it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a very hard word to translate in that context yeah yeah so i take it in the sense that uh, i think it's the fourth definition or the third definition that kidana will gives in his um, dictionary um which is that it's a it's a technical term for the piece of hymnography mm -hmm. um so you know uh you find um for example in uh, byzantine byzantine um liturgy you know stikarion and you know uh, they just take the, the greek words instead of you know stikarion means i don't know something to do with a rod instead yeah. of translating that that word as rod you know uh they choose to you, transliterate you, yeah this is this is yeah. the common um this is the this is why people have to study original languages 
this is the when my sister was a, a linguist very briefly in college she came up with this uh, italian phrase one time and she was telling me about it that they had this tradition where they said the translator is the traitor and i thought that was hilarious because i'm a, I'm a translator and interpreter and then you are as well but there there's a sense in which people just need to pursue the original languages but the reality is they're not doing that and so that's why we have to translate it and and those decisions yeah. are, are are always difficult and everyone is going to have uh you know different points of view on when to do it when not to do it for example it, it is common to have most names in scripture transliterated in the way that you said. And sometimes when you have the double transliteration, that's how we get the name Jesus because it's originally Joshua, but it, it gets transliterated twice. And, and that's how we miss the connection between Jesus and Joshua uh, because of a double transliteration uh, that happens at one point. James yeah. in the English tradition is supposed to be Jacob, but again, because of the nature of, of how people select what to translate and transliterate, the whole movements in the United States, like the Jehovah's Witness, you know, sometimes people will translate, I am that I am, in, in which case you don't need anything, whereas some people have the reverence and they'll spell the consonants of the Lord's name without the vowels. And some people will add the vowels. Some people make it a Y. Some people make it a J. Some people make it a W, a V. Every jot and tittle uh, has a selection. But yes, I'm I'm with you in the case that I think some things, uh, if you leave to transliteration, like I, I haven't pushed it logically, but I think, for example, maybe even the word exab here, uh, when transliterated from Gez to Amharic, they never translated it. They never said, Behirawi getachin which people think is funny when I say it because it sounds ridiculous in Amharic. Even the they never said nobody's ever said that. And I've said that to people to kind of to demonstrate to them that they know a little bit of is already in the sense that there are some things that that maintain that. So, so you're, you're saying that milk is one of those things that maybe just leave it alone and people will understand that it's a genre of hymnography, uh, technically. Yeah. So, um, in the, uh, one of the more recent, um, uh, prints, uh, publications of the, of the, the prayer book, I, I included a glossary because I was, uh, I realized mm -hmm. that, you know, um, there are a lot of youth using, um, uh, these books um, originally, you know, uh, didn't conceive of it as a, a youth prayer book, uh, <laughs> you know, so I use technical language like hypostatically, which even mm -hmm. some of the, the, the clergy, you know, might uh, <laughs> <laughs> wrestle with um, now and then. Um, but, um, you know, yeah, to explain certain words like, you know, what does Abuna mean and, you know, what is Tawado and, you know, all of these um, you know, words that, um, yeah, we transliterate. Uh, Melk, again, is a, is a technical term for a kind of hymn um, rather than, you know. That, that, that usually is um, venerating or if you want to use a different term, the, the various body parts of the, the, the image of the, right? Like, I think if yeah. there is some root to it, but like you said, it, it, it comes on to take on a new technical term um, meaning. Yes, yeah. So it includes the um, the subject as well. So the, the it's yeah called milk for um, a certain reason because it's talking about the um, all the the images, you know, the the hair of the head and the eyebrows and and so on and so forth. Um, so um, yeah, it, it speaks about the the image of the the person. But you also have um, you know like Melka Korban. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the milk of the, the Eucharist, where, um, you know, that's uh, certainly, you know, not um, the same kind of uh, thing. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a name of a certain uh, genre of hymn, you know, um, as I've understood. But, but yeah, generally, um, you know, it's either the Godhead, you know, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity, uh, Our Lady Mary, the angels, the righteous, you know, all the different categories of um, saint and... Um, yeah, the, the hymn venerates the different um, body parts as well as certain um, elements from the, the saint's life. But I'm sure um, you'll have um, 
our brother uh augustine. augustine yes i need to we we need our, our schedules to match and give him uh, some time to get acclimated to uh his new home in in europe there um i got to spend one day with you all in the reading group that he was organizing in studying various milk um i just wondered if you wanted to share share some thoughts on on that experience as well and getting to read internationally with uh, people in in this good is right tradition right you know that was a real blessing as i've kind of um always uh envisaged um you know working together with others you know so translations generally they're not a one-man job you know um especially liturgical translations you know they're normally translated by committee um or you know um especially nowadays in the modern era you know uh yeah in uh you know in ancient times um potentially more of uh you know individual translation but um you know uh nowadays yeah it is is viewed as something that you know you need to approach collectively more collectively so um you know that was a real blessing to have the you know the reading group the milk um reading group and um yeah we we um Took on Melka uh, Arwai Tunsasa, so the uh, milk of the, the four living creatures, um, and um, yeah, that's, that was a, such an interesting one to delve into, and you know, finding all of the um, material from um, Enoch and um, you know uh, throughout Scripture where it mentions the Kirubim. Um, that yeah, it was such a such a. That's right. That's that's a good point because that's one of the points I remember you and I discussing because it's uh it's harder for people at first to understand the the four living creatures sometimes they call them the four living beasts uh, are from you know revelation but they also kind of mirror in ezekiel and as you said in in the um, liturgical texts and extra um the awad and Ms. Aftu, the extra books we we see them in in various corpus within the church the thing about them is some some of the people like you said are interpreting them from the church point of view as other uh, cherubim or or cherubim like other other specific type of angels the ones usually depicted as the chubby cheeked babies in the in the western tradition uh, tradition and the heads with uh, wings attached their head with big eyes and in the ethiopian uh, tradition of of artwork um whereas i think some people were just viewing them as uh, independent entities and so even myself i did i didn't have full clarity on uh, the interpretation tradition of them so that was that was a new experience for me and in, in learning and, and reading with you okay well yeah it was, a, it was a real blessing to have you with us um you know thankfully yeah we we managed to uh, to complete it we just need to review it before we can uh hopefully um have it printed so that is that, that that is the plan you know to have these books there for uh the faithful for the laity the clergy um you know all the members of the church to actually pray these texts you know and have communion with the saints have communion with the angels um so um that that's really the uh got to be the, the focus and you know i really respect the academic the more academic um side of it as well um so uh, yeah, I think we have to. Um, as I'm reminded of um, Pope John Paul's, you know, breathing with two lungs for some reason. But uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, have both the the academic side and the um, the uh, side of devotion, piety. Yeah. So you uh, you mean in terms of like parsing manuscripts and and seeing you know what is the the true text, uh, quote unquote, you yeah. know, it, it, by by comparing the oldest uh, available manuscripts exactly yeah yeah yeah. that's right you hit the nail on the head there it's um you know yes uh, invaluable work that um you know people like augustine are doing there to really go through all the manuscripts and you know find the the earliest witnesses right through to you know um books that are printed in the 21st century that have you know completely different traditions you know that have uh, continued probably in the in the oral tradition and so on and so forth and the combat and and all of that so um you know um yeah it's, it's it's a real joy you know to be able to to do that work now and you know we have so many um, resources now um even you know when i started um as i say around 10 years ago when i went to seminary around 11 years ago now um yeah there was a lot less you know and now it's, mm -hmm. it's really starting to sort of um 
yeah, increase. So, uh, yeah, you know, we had one book you... from uh, uh, His Eminence who passed away. I, I also sometimes say his beatitude, uh, Abu Namal Kasidik, who passed away earlier this year. He fell asleep with the Lord a um, long time. Long time uh, giant in our church. He had the this his book, the teaching on the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, and I think that was like the sole English book that we had <laughs> available at at our parish. And so, I've done a number of ad hoc uh, translations of, for example, Zotaris Alot. I think we had the budge copy of Wudasi Mariam. So we've we've spread, we've spread kind of the daily prayers and the praise of Mary in that way, but to sort of like systematically go through everything and provide texts that could be used uh, for catechesis. I mean, we, we don't, <laughs> we did not really have that, but these things are, they're new and, and they're burgeoning. So I, I am, I am hopeful. And like you said, using uh, both lungs to breathe is, uh, is very powerful, especially because in, in Semitic languages and other ancient languages, the, the breath is, is tied to the soul and, and the spirit. I always t tell people how the same Sirwak al in, in Giz, you have uh, Stinfas, Nafas, and Manfas um, all, all together. And so there is, there is some connection between all of those things there in, in, in what animates us and, and what moves us. And, and during uh, this new plague of ours, you've had an opportunity to work on a, another publication. Is that right? About the miracles of Mary? Yes. Um, so the uh, yeah the miracles of uh, Our Lady Mary Tamar Mariam, uh, and also Tamar Jesus uh, miracles of our Lord. Um, uh, Tamar Jesus is um, actually something that I began uh, as when I returned uh, from 70, 2014 and gradually started to um, complete it now. Um, uh, I'd say about three quarters of the way through the whole thing. But the, uh, the project that I'm, I've been working on is to unite the miracles with the, the lectionary, Mitzafa Gitzawi a project uh, that I've been working on is, is you know, to have, to first to have a, a printed lectionary, you know, um, you might see yeah, lots of Tell us about that. Some people, uh, don't know. Uh, yeah. Some people don't know the lectionaries, uh, the schedule of readings. Can you say a little bit about that? I've used that word around people before and they looked at me funny. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, the, the two main parts of the lectionary are uh, the sanctoral and the, the temporal. Um, and the temporal is uh, the part of the lectionary that I've done most. So that's the readings uh, from New Testament plus the um, Psalm versicle or Musbak, uh, which is um, chanted by the by the deacon and um, by the the whole uh, congregation uh, during the Divine Liturgy. Um, so uh, it includes. The, the readings from the New Testament and the the psalm, which is chanted, um, and also you'll find the the mesmor uh, from the Dugwaf, so the hymnary of uh, Saint Yarid. Um, so uh, it's uh, focuses the temporal part focuses on in themes uh, mostly for uh, the that uh, the liturgical season uh, that we find ourselves in a given time in liturgical year um so you know we're on the season direction coming toward you know the, the end of the, the season of resurrection and um we'll we'll um, proceed to astemero uh, which are the uh, season of imploration for mercy um and then uh, kremt which is the, the rainy season and so on so um yeah the the various uh, seasons of the year have different themes and um you know i've uh Kind of undertaken this uh, original work, um, which no one no one's done before, um, of uniting the uh, the reading the the passages, uh, chapters, and so on from Tamar Mariam and Tamar Jesus uh, with the the theme for the day. Sometimes days that um, uh, take place within the the liturgical year, the season, um, and the, um, and what I've uh, tried to do is uh, include 
all the, the the miracles so we don't have to sort of flick around often you see um clergy kind of just picking up the book and sort of dipping straight into it <laughs> yeah so, i um, i have noticed that um i i've always found it curious you've raised a, a brilliant point in talking about the originality of what you're trying to do is that I've noticed that there's this tradition of reading from the miracles of Mary and the miracles of Jesus. There's also um, various gadlat or other dirsanat that um, depending on the parish, I, I've seen different parishes have different rules, sometimes based off of the name of the parish, but sometimes uh, not even based off the name of the parish. It might be, you know, the personal piety of that priest. You know, I, it, it, it really, it doesn't seem to... Uh, and why I say that is it's not written in the lectionary. You don't you don't see it written in the lectionary. It doesn't tell you what to read, whereas everything else is almost in excruciating detail. If you want to, you know, express individuality, it is it is crushing your individuality and showing you the church has has her voice and it tells you every single thing what you're supposed to read. And and yet, like you're saying, uh, with the tradition of some of these other books. It, it doesn't tell you what to read at all. So uh, that that is definitely another another gap that you are able to uh, locate in, in the tradition as you're um, widening the uh, range of texts available in the, in the English language. You can just pause it there if you like for a second. I'll uh, yeah, just uh, make a quick save. <laughs> 